What's going on, Fire Nation? It's your boy, the Fireman, and welcome back to another reaction video. Today, we're here with the Odd Ones Out conventions. I miss them. Now, everybody loves Odd Ones Out. They got the awesome animation. Love their little story times. But yeah, if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe down below. Follow me on all my social medias. All right, let's get this video started. <laughs> if you're one of those kids that spends too much time on that darn computer machine, darn computer machine, a great place to get the recommended amount of human interaction with others who share a similar interest, or at least they were. You might have seen some conventions <laughs> the in the news recently, machine. you know, the ones like VidCon, Comic Con, and E3. But did you know mm -hmm. there's conventions for all sorts of different things, like coin collecting, pens, and degenerates? The first convention I ever went to was in Arizona called Phoenix Comic Con. No, I was 16 baby. years old, and it, no exaggeration, changed my life. I had heard a lot about geek culture online, but Phoenix Comic Con was the very first time I witnessed it in its fullest. I was a very sheltered kid. It was the first time I'd seen a brony and a furry uh, and brownie. whatever this is in the wild. <laughs> that changes a person. I was told that it was not cool to like geeky things. And as a 16 year old, I tried really hard to make it seem like I didn't secretly like a bunch of geeky things. Hmm. But people at Comic Con just didn't wrong with liking geeky culture. things. Geeky like, things is where it's at. People thought of them or something. Is that allowed? I guess when I was 16, I was hyper desperate to receive everyone's <sighs> approval. I was so hyper desperate that while walking around my mm -hmm. first convention, I was stressing out that I wasn't in cosplay. Oh, all these pop culture characters are <laughs> judging me because I'm not wearing any Steven, makeup. Steven, Spider Miles. Day, I still haven't ever cosplayed. I'm excited for the Miles Morales Spider Man game on PlayStation. I'm go as this quadrupedic horse. <laughs> also, Spark from Pokemon Go. I went to one panel called How to Make Steampunk Weapons, but instead of teaching us how to weld real life weapons powered by steam, <laughs> people on the panel taught us how to paint Nerf guns to make them look like they were powered by steam. And that was, no exaggeration, the most disappointing panel I've ever been to. Mm. There was also a panel for bronies, but the bronies? I was too chicken to go. <laughs> Did I mention that my grandfather, who I'm named after, got drafted into World War II when he was 18? He fought in a war Drops so I could go to a being. comic convention and be too nervous to talk to bronies. <laughs> What a different life we had. At most conventions, people in the expo hall will sell a lot of super cool unlicensed merchandise. Expensive yeah, a problem. a lot of artists will sell prints and plushies and oven mitts with characters and titles they probably didn't get the license to sell. But if it's Puh. at a convention or on Etsy, then for some reason it's okay. Fine. I've always felt weird Just let it slide. Just let it slide. On one hand, you shouldn't be allowed to make money off of someone sponge else's man. intellectual property without the owner's consent. The sponge man square hand, hand. Look at this cool Bowser wallet, Bowser print, and Bowser bandana that I own. And this body pillow. It's a moral gray area because <laughs> the people buying this type of merch are the hardcore fans. They know of the property these characters came from. They probably already own licensed merch of the character. The mm -hmm. artist isn't claiming to have created the character either. It's a mutual understanding between buyer and seller that we both think Bowser is cool and we just want to buy as much merch as possible. <laughs> you kind of have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but let me just say this to get it out there. You're not allowed to sell bootleg that ones out merch. Phoenix Comic Con actually had changed the name of their convention to Phoenix Fan. You got to come the official the people way. At the San Diego Comic Con didn't like that Phoenix was stealing their name, so these conventions that don't care about stealing other people's copyright are forcing others to respect their copyright. Interesting. As some of you may know, since 2012, I have become a little more successful. <laughs> in 2019, I got invited to be a guest at Phoenix Fan Fusion, which is my home convention. The really crazy part is the convention put me in the celebrity line, like <laughs> next to the people where you have to pay for photos and autographs. I didn't charge my fans for anything, so that made my line appear a lot longer than others. <laughs> and my line was no exaggeration right next to Jeff People Goldblum's appreciate line. That. I was going to make eye contact with <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. For the man Jeff showed Jurassic up for a couple Park. hours on Saturday, and when he came out from backstage, <laughs> everyone in his line and my line started wooing and clapping, and even I was <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> and then Jeff took a look at my line, then looked at me, and then gave me a nod of approval, saying, Not bad, kid. He didn't say it out loud, but I could tell he said it with his eyes. <laughs> he also said that I looked kind of cute, so... <laughs> oh, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> the first time I went to VidCon, that said, also, thanks, no Jeff. exaggeration, changed my life. Again, it was the first time I met all these YouTubers that I've been watching for years, and... Okay, I'll admit, at first I was kind of fanboy -y, but I've gotten completely desensitized meeting other YouTubers and feel no joy anymore. When I meet another YouTuber, I say, oh, you make videos in your bedroom? Me too. People know that you're a bedwetter too, right? No? That's just me then? If you've ever given me something uh, no? at a convention, then you'll be happy to know that I've kept 
everything I've ever been given. Unless you're the guy that gave me a plastic baggie full of water and other junk and called it a homemade snow globe. <laughs> I used to collect snow globes, so it was a nice sentiment, but I didn't want to take it home with me and have it inevitably break and get all the important fan art wet. So I chucked it. And as I'm telling you this, there's some poor kid out there going, Hey, he, he's talking about my snow globe. He, he did. Uh. <laughs> and now I feel bad. So. Uh. He made up another one. Here, I'll mail this to you and you can get a taste of your own medicine. I don't know why this is such a popular question, but a lot of times people will ask me, what's the weirdest fan interaction you've ever had? I think they think that some of you are cringy. Mm -hmm. I never have an answer for them because all my some fans are super nice. Yeah, someone gave me a bag of water, but that's not weird. That's nice. Okay, I have received fan mail from a prison, which is true, so I guess some of you aren't law-abiding citizens. <laughs> Going to conventions and meeting fans and being on panels is a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. You but drain. it does give you a lot of time to really experience you the convention. Time. Since 2017, when I would go to a convention, it would mean I was working. I still had a fun time, but I didn't really get to just relax with friends. That is, until I went to a convention last December called MFF, which stands for Midwest Fur Fest. Fest. Now, wow, things, that's did one you of the furry, furry, furry creepy convention? things. Well, I went with some friends to Ooh. a furry convention so that I could actually enjoy a convention and not have to work. Although I still got recognized even though I was wearing a disguise. <laughs> Furries are very touchy people, I've learned. Not touchy as in overly sensitive. Well, some probably are. But they're also literally touchy. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you I heard that. I don't know if it's true or not. December, I was in Somebody in the comment section got to tell me down below, is that true? If my grandpa could see me now, he would probably be frowning. Or smiling. I don't know. I don't judge. We were all crowded in. There was a moose breathing down my neck. Mm -hmm. And we stopped at a floor because more furries wanted to come in. So I backed up to make more room. But I backed up a little too close to the moose. And he grabbed my hips and I went, ah! In my mind. I didn't say it out loud. In real life, I went, so that was probably well, the weirdest fan experience I've I've never seen anything. still wondering. I don't know if he was a fan like, oh, uh. too, But he was definitely a fan of my body. Or he was drunk. I don't know. Again, I don't judge. I was debating on whether or not I should include this story, but I think it would be a good lesson he for everyone my to waist. hear. Here's my James Man, if he PSA. Grabbed my waist, this he message is for what, everyone, and especially furries. Don't touch people without their permission. Mm. In a moment, I stayed quiet, but that sort of behavior isn't okay, and I should have spoken out. Hopefully, most of you are mindful of other people's <laughs> personal space. However, comma, at least one of you went to prison, so... I don't know. Overall, it was the best ironic trip ever. <laughs> mm. At the end of the day, conventions are a lot of fun, and I really, really miss going to them. And when it's safe to do so again, I recommend you try and go to one you're interested in. And Grandpa, I'm sorry if I disappointed you. <laughs> All right, you guys, so that was Conventions by the Islands. Hell, it was a, a funny little, funny little clip. Um, but yeah, I would like to say I would love to go convention. So if any of you guys are a really good convention to go to, let me know down in the comment section. Now, like I said, if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel down below. And that's it for this video, you guys. Until the next time, that's it for your boy. I'm out of here. Peace.